it says it's recording. Very good. David is with us okay? and so is Rob. Welcome hey, everybody. Dave. Got lots of people joining us. Thank you all for joining us today for our Medicare webinar with our founder, Chuck Vickery. We're gonna just give it another few seconds for more people to join in. Hope everyone's enjoying this beautiful fall day so far. Well, welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us. My name is Betsy Reeves. I am the marketing coordinator here at Elevate Wealth Advisory, formerly Vickery Financial Services. Today we have Chuck Vickery, our founder, with us. And Chuck is going to be discussing Medicare and managing your health care expenses in retirement. As we go through the webinar today, you will see down at the bottom a chat box as well as a Q&A box. And if you have questions as we're going through the webinar, just feel free to type them in there. And at the very end, we will go ahead and address those questions. We're also recording the webinar today and I will send all of you a link to that. And so once it's over, I'll forward that to you in case you wanted to share it with any friends or family. And then if you want to look at some of our upcoming webinars for the rest of the year, you can go to our website at elevate-wealth.com. We will be covering cybersecurity in October, end of year planning in November, and then philanthropy and charitable giving in December. So Chuck, go ahead and take it away. Okay, hello everybody. Thanks for coming today. Uh, we're excited to be speaking to you. This is uh, uh, for retirees, Medicare season is coming up. Open season starts October the 15th. So what we're going to talk about is managing health care expenses in retirement and what baby boomers and people that are close to retirement need to know about Medicare. Uh, we talk about three key points. Uh, one of the things we want you to do is not have to pay any penalties. We don't want you to have to overpay uh, for your premiums. And we want to make sure that because of health care costs, you don't run out of money. So those are the three points we're going to sort of talk about. And, and, and we'll talk about how we do those things. Uh, but I've got an agenda. We want to talk about what is Medicare, who enroll in Medicare, and when, and how you enroll in Medicare. Uh, the agenda part two is we're going to talk about Medicare, which is government insurance, and private insurance, and how the two work together. So we'll talk about how much does Medicare cost. And a friend of mine and client uh, recently told me that when he turned 65, his son-in-law said, congratulations, you now have free health care. And that's not exactly the case. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about what Medicare covers, what it does not cover, and again, how private insurance works with it. Agenda part three, we're going to talk about how you plan for higher health costs in retirement. And there's two reasons that health costs go up. One is just inflation. And two is as we age, the, there's an increased need uh, for health care. And unfortunately, Medicare does not cover long-term care. And we'll briefly talk about that. So let's talk about enrolling. Uh, who pays for health care in the United States? Well, before age 65, it's normally through your employer plan. Uh, if you've already retired, uh, some employers, mostly governments like schools and uh, state governments and federal governments, let you take your health insurance with you into retirement. Uh, if you leave your employer, there's a thing called COBRA. So you can continue on your health plan for 18 months. The employer does not supplement it, so you have to pay 100% of the cost plus a little 3% or so processing charge. And then if you want individual health insurance, that's through the Affordable Care Act. Uh, and the prices on that are determined by uh, your income and assets, uh, mostly your income. 
uh, and it's quite high and sometimes it's it's limited in scope. And then there are other ways, maybe you just self-insure uh, if it's for a short period of time and roll the dice. But once you turn age 65, Medicare pays first, and then your other insurance pays second. And the reason that this is important is if you don't have Medicare, none of these other things pay. Now there's an exception to this rule. And the exception is if you or your spouse are working for a large employer, and that's defined as 20 employees or more are on the health plan, then you can continue under that plan and not enroll in Medicare. Otherwise, everybody should, I would say must, but you don't have to, but everybody should enroll in Medicare when you turn 65. Okay. Now, if you're covered under your spouse's plan, make sure you check with the, the benefits administrator or HR or somebody and make sure that plan continues to cover you at full benefits and it doesn't become a supplemental type plan. Now, if you don't enroll on time, there are late enrollment penalties. So when you're 65, you're out running marathons, you're in great health, life is good. And you just say, I think I'll save that money for a few years. So I'll just wait until I'm 70. Well, every year you delay, you have to pay a 10% penalty. So if you waited five years, when you did enroll, you would pay the regular rate plus 50% for the rest of your life, okay? And during that period of time, you may not have any insurance, so you're, you're, you're going without coverage. And if you don't enroll in time, your private insurance options are somewhat limited, and we'll talk about that. So what is Medicare? Medicare is our national health insurance program, and it's for people that are 65 plus, a few people under 65 that are on disability can get it. It's administered by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, and you enroll through the Social Security Administration. So everybody in the United States, uh, all US citizens are eligible at 65. Legal residents who've been here for five years are eligible. And again, a few people on disability. And Medicare is really broken down into, into two parts. Uh, this says four, uh, and that's true, but let's, Let's take part one and part two. Part A is part one is hospital insurance. Part B is medical insurance for the doctor and, and labs and some stuff like that. And you'll notice at the bottom, it says provided by Medicare. Well, these are government plans. Part C is a Medicare Advantage plan that covers the hospital part A, the doctor part B and drugs part C. And then part D is your Medicare prescription drug coverage that uh, came in under Bush. So we've got, I said two parts, this next slide makes it a little clearer. So you either have original Medicare or traditional Medicare as it's sometimes called, or you have a Medicare Advantage or a Part C plan. Now, original Medicare is Part A, the hospital, Part B, the doctor, Part D, the drug plan, and most people get a Medicare supplement policy that takes care of the gaps that A and B don't cover. The alternative is to go with a Medicare Advantage plan, Part C. And these plans are like an HMO, health maintenance organization, or a PPO, uh, preferred provider organization. And they typically include Parts A, Part B, and Part D all in one thing. Uh, and these are through private insurance companies. Uh, United Healthcare does it through AARP, Humana does it, Cigna does it, uh, United of Omaha. There's a, a myriad of companies out there that do it. Uh, if you go with option one, nobody gets a commission. If you go with option two, somebody gets a commission. So there's, a, there's an incentive for insurance salesmen to uh, encourage people to go with Medicare Advantage. And, and if you'll notice on here, you'll see, see pages 61 to 64, and the source is Medicare and you. Well, there's a, there's a booklet 
that the government put Medicare and you, uh, if you just Google Medicare and you, uh, it's there. If anybody asks you for a date of birth or a name or an email address, you've gone to somebody trying to sell you something. So look around and just go to the one that's, that's uh, by the government and they won't ask you any questions. It's about 120 pages and you can download it and you've got it. So the, the real crux of the matter is the stay with option one or do I stay with option two? Uh, and we'll talk about that. So how do you enroll in Medicare? Well, if you are already receiving social security when you turn 65, Medicare parts A and B are automatic. Now you can decline if you don't want part B, if you just don't want it, or if you're still working and you don't think you need it. The coverage starts on the first day of the month you turn 65. And there's a little quirk in the law. If you were born October 1st, your benefits start September 1st. So if you're born on the 1st, they start the previous month. If you're born on the 2nd, they start on the 1st. If you're born on the 31st, they start on the 1st, okay? Uh, part C and D, the Advantage and the drug plan are not automatic. To enroll in those, you must choose a private insurer and proactively enroll. If you are not receiving social security when you turn 65. And, and folks retiring and taking social security are two entirely different decisions. They don't necessarily have to happen uh, at the same time. But if you're not receiving social security when you turn 65, that's when you go to the social security administration and you sign up during the Medicare enrollment period. And there are three enrollment periods. The first one's the initial enrollment period uh, and that's for people that are not covered by a big group and are not working when they're age 65. There's a special enrollment period, and that's for people who are covered by a big group and don't want to enroll initially at age 65. And then there's a general enrollment period for people who forgot to enroll. Um, so if you're like most people and you're going to enroll at age 65, we recommend you do it three months before your birthday. So again, if you've got a September birthday, you've got August, July, and June, you can enroll June 1st. The coverage starts September 1st. If you enroll in September, it starts when you enroll. Enroll in the three months after your birthday, after you've turned 65, it's starts the beginning of the next month. So you're, you're, you're going without a little bit of coverage. You don't have to pay for it until the month you turn 65 if you enroll early. And we encourage everybody to, to do that. So who signs up for part A during the initial enrollment period? Almost everybody who turns 65. Now, if you're still working and you're with a big firm, again, check with your benefits administrator to see if this would be a, an addition to your group health insurance. Uh, it might offer enhanced coverage. However, if you're covered with a high deductible health plan paired with a health savings account, once you enroll for part A or part B, you can no longer make contributions to that health savings account. So if you're in an HSA uh, with a big employer, you may wanna just delay doing that. Now, who signs up for part B during the initial enrollment period? Basically everybody that's not covered by a big plan. Either you're not working, you're self-employed, you're employed by a smaller company, you're on COBRA, uh, you're receiving retiree health benefits where you've taken health insurance from retirement. Now you're 65. Or if you're employed by a company that has a uh, low comprehensive plan, it's not really that substantial. Uh, and earlier I said, when you turn 65, Medicare pays first. So if you're on COBRA, and let's, let's say you were 64 and a half and you retired on COBRA, 
when you turn 65, if you do not enroll for Medicare, then the COBRA is not any good because Medicare pays first. And they'll say, hey, you didn't sign up for this, so we're not going to supplement what it pays, so we're not going to pay anything. Uh, and that's also true of retiree health benefits. So uh, you, you, you need to sign up at, at age 65 if you're in one of these categories. Who signs up for Part D? Basically the same people that won't be and won't coverage in the now or in the future. And if you don't sign up now, there are penalties for when you do sign up. And they don't sound that much, it's 33 cents a month. But if you go four or five years, all of a sudden you're paying a lot of money needlessly for the rest of your life. Uh, and there are two parts to plan D. One is the standalone prescription drug plan that most people have. And then Medicare, some Medicare Advantage plans include drugs. And you just sort of have to dig into the plan and compare to see what the benefits are there. So that's the initial enrollment period. And then there's a special enrollment period. And the special enrollment period is for people that didn't sign up when they returned, when they turned 65 because they're working for a big employer one with many 20 or more employees. So that's an exception. So as long as you've got employee health insurance, and we had a client that signed up when he turned 65. He's working for a, a multinational company. And he got to looking at it and he said, heck, I'm having to pay for, for, for Medicare and my group insurance. So he just dropped his Medicare. And then when he retired, he came back and he picked it up. And there were no penalties because he was under this exception. So if you're under this exception, when do you sign up? Well, you can sign up any time before your coverage ends. But to get it without any questions asked, you do have to sign up within eight months of your group coverage ending. So when you retire, before you retire, sign up. But if you don't do it as soon as you retire, please do, because if you wait longer than eight months, it creates some problems. Uh, there's a special enrollment period for Part D. When do you sign up for that? Anytime before the coverage ends. And you can have the two simultaneously if you want it, especially if your group plan doesn't cover drugs very well. But you have to sign up for that within 63 days after the coverage ends. So if you, the, the, the rule of thumb for me is if you're working for a big company about a month before you retire, go ahead and sign up for Medicare A, B, and D. So we just want to avoid, avoid these late enrollment penalties. So sign up during the initial or special enrollment period. And that also avoids any gaps in coverage. Because I'd rather be double insured for several months than underinsured or uninsured for 28 seconds. Because of my luck, something would happen during those 28 seconds. Now, if you fail to enroll, there's a general enrollment period. And that general enrollment period is in January, February, and March. And the coverage becomes effective on July the 1st. So if you turn 65 on May 1st or in the middle of May, and you did not enroll because you're in great health, and now it's September the 28th, and you've got a doctor's appointment because there's a problem, and you think, I better go get this Medicare stuff. Well, sorry, Charlie, you've, you've missed your, your three months after you turned 65. So the next time you can sign up is in January. But the coverage isn't going to start until July of the following year. So, and, and, and this is designed very simply uh, to prevent people from doing that very thing, not have coverage until, until they get sick and then jumping on it. Okay. And uh, these rules were written by people that, uh, I think understand them sometimes they're a little crazy. But if we review this, we've got the initial enrollment period for everybody age 65 who's not covered by a big group, 
best time to sign up is three months before your birthday or within the three months. And it starts the month you turn 65. The special enrollment period, you've still got all the coverages through your group and right before you retire, sign up. And then the general enrollment period for people that, I don't know why anybody would forget, but they do. So how do you sign up? Well, again, if you're getting social security, it's automatic, but if you're not, you can go to www.ssa, social security administration.gov and apply for Medicare benefits. Or you can call social security and you're gonna get a recording of this. So you can look up the number in the recording, 800-772-1213. Or you can go to medicare.gov and it's amazing what information you can do that. And you can get parts A and B. You also can go to medicare.gov and sign up for part D. And you go in there and you put in the drugs that you're taking uh, and they will tell you all the companies that cover you and they'll give you the premiums and you can select and actually sign up for part D at medicare.gov. So uh, if you want original Medicare, just shop for a standalone prescription drug plan. And again, you can do that at medicare.gov. If you're enrolling in a Medicare Advantage plan, and a lot of people start off originally with the original A, B, and D, and then they go take a look at the Medicare Advantage and, and see what it's like. Now, if you've been watching TV lately, Joe Namath is telling you, you get vision, you get dental, you get hearing, you get transportation, you get money back, you get everything. Well, again, that's insurance companies selling this. And how Medicare Advantage works is the government gives them, I don't remember the exact amount, but it's about $800 to $850 a month. Uh, and the average profit from a Medicare Advantage plan is about $1,400 a year. So the more people they enroll, the more $1,400 they get. Uh, but there's some drawbacks with Advantage plans. Uh, the, the, the biggest advantage is it's normally cheaper. And so we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that, okay? You also can apply for Part D through a private insurer or through Medicare.gov, as I said. And, and, and nobody's trying to sell you Medi uh, Part D because there's no commissions paid on that by most companies. So let's look at how Medicare and private insurance works. And all the studies have shown us that as we age, the price goes up, but about half the money is spent for premiums for Medicare and about half the money uh, cost of, of healthcare is out of pocket cost. And, and so and it averaged in 2016, almost $5,500 a person. That number is probably up just a little bit since then. So when we look at out of pocket, what are we talking about? Well, you got to pay for the premiums, Part D. You got to pay the premiums for Part D. Uh, if you have a Medicare Advantage, you got to pay for that. Uh, there are deductibles, there are co pays, and there are services that are not covered by Medicare that you have to, have to pay for. Okay. So I've been on Medicare for nine years. I've only received one bill in that nine year period, and it was when Patsy. Uh, went and had an eye exam and they did the, is one better than two is a better than b they don't cover that but they do cover going to the optometrist and just letting them check you out for good health so what what do you pay for this stuff well part a remember when you were working or when you are when you look at your pay stub if you're still working there's that little line on there medi all right, it's 1.65% of your pay and your employer matches it. That's who pays for part A. If you're not working, it's free. Assuming you've worked long enough. Part B changes every year. For 2021, it's $148.50 a month. Plus, there's a thing called IRMA, Income Related Adjustments. And we'll talk about that. Part D is paid to the private insurer. The cost varies with a plan, usually somewhere between eight to $80 a month. If you're taking lots of drugs 
and you want a low deductible, it's going to be higher. If you're not taking any drugs, go find the cheapest policy you can. If it's six bucks a month or seven bucks a month, buy it. Now, for those of you on this call that are already retired and you have Plan D, October the 15th is open enrollment. And maybe you got one of the cheaper plans, but you've seen it go up. Uh, because you aren't taking any medicine, but you've still seen the price go up, go into medicare.gov and, and re-look, and you might be able to save four or five, 10 bucks a month, just, uh, or more, maybe. Just by, and you can change. There's no questions asked on this because you've been in it, you qualified for it, and you still got it. So it's guaranteed issue from one to another, okay? Uh, so this modified, uh, this income-related adjustment, this IRMA thing, how does that work? Well, if you'll look on the left, you will see, I don't know if my mouse works or not. No. If you look on the, here we go. If you look on the left, you'll see modified adjusted gross for single people and then for joint filing uh, returns. And you'll see these income amounts. And, uh, the MAGI is modified adjusted gross income. That's your income, and then they add back to it things like IRA contributions or 401k contributions to really come up with a gross amount. Uh, but if you're in this or less single, this or less married, then you pay 148.50. Uh, if you have Part D, we just took an average and put $40 in. So. A, B, and D is $188 a month. Now, if your income goes up by $1, then there is this income-related adjustment amount. And in this category, it's $59.40 a month, plus another $12.30 for the Part D. So you can see it's, it's about $72 more per month. And as your income increases, the price per month goes up and, and you could be paying more money than you'd like to. I mean, it's, the benefits are all the same. It'd be nice if I got more benefits, if I had to pay five or $600, but you don't, you get the same benefits, the 148.50 person. And these prices do not include premiums for Medicare Advantage or Medicare supplemental plans, the Medigap policies, okay? So you, you, you sort of need to look at, can I control my expenses? Uh, because if you, if you do something that creates gains or you might want to spread it out or not take as much money at one time, if it will keep you below one of these different levels. And that's one of the things we talk to people about when we review that are on Medicare. Uh, and then you do have to pay some out of pocket. Part A is a $1,484 uh, per spell of illness deductible. Part B is a $203 a year. Now this is way for flu shots and mammograms and pat smears and some other things. And then part D there's a $445 drug. Uh, there are also co-pays. So, Part A, if you're in the hospital, you pay $371 per day. Well, they cover it all for the first 60 days, but then for the next 30 after that, you pay $371 a day. And then for the 91st through the 150th, you pay $740 a day. Uh, skilled nursing, this is basically a nursing home. Uh, if you go into a nursing home and you have Medicare and you've been in the hospital for three consecutive days, they will pay the first 20 days. But the next 80 days after that, the deductible is $185 a day. And that's pretty close to the cost of the nursing home. So there's really no benefit there. Uh, you also have to pay, they pay 80% and you have to pay 20%. But there is no limit to that 20%. Um, there's, there's, uh, Medicare has changed. It's 56 years old and it's changed. And they, they've modified the benefits a little bit. And, and people kept thinking that they put a cap on this so that uh, uh, there was some type of umbrella there where we wouldn't be exposed. 
But when they looked at what it costs to cover that 20% that they don't cover, uh, they just said, we've got to raise the rates and people don't want to pay a higher rate. Uh, Obama put in coverage for long-term care that was long-term. This is 20 days. And they were going to charge people on Medicare an additional premium. And there was a tremendous uproar. So they rescinded that. They didn't do it. Uh, right now, uh, there's discussion in Congress for Medicare to cover uh, hearing, dental, uh, and, and, and glasses and, and vision uh, care. And those will have some type deductible or copay or something like that if they come about. So, uh, and then Part D has got a deductible, and then you, you, there's 25 percent of drug cost after deductible that has, that you pay. Then there's a small copayment once your spending has reached 6,500 dollars. These drug plans vary widely. If you're taking a lot of drugs, get a comprehensive plan. If you're not taking any, just get a real inexpensive plan. So Medicare covers the hospital 100 percent for the first 60 days. Medical services, doctors, outpatient services, 80%. And then, as I said, some preventive cares. And when you go to the Medicare and you, there's a list of everything that they cover. What it does not cover is long-term care. It does not cover care delivered outside the United States. So if you're for your 50th wedding anniversary, if you're going to take a Rhine River cruise or go to Canada or go to Mexico or whatever, uh, think about it because Medicare will not cover you. Right now, it doesn't cover dental, vision, or hearing, cosmetic surgery, acupuncture, uh, amounts over the Medicare approved amount, and uh, amounts not covered by the deductibles and the co-insurance. So uh, what private insurance does, and this is where the Medicare supplement comes in, it pays the Part A deductible. It pays the hospital cost after 60 days. It pays the 20% of doctor bill. It pays the amounts uh, over the Medicare approved limit. Uh, it helps with the uh, prescription drugs. So these Medicare supplement policies are private health insurance for individuals. And again, this is the uh, United Healthcare, United of Omaha, uh, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, uh, there are a myriad of companies out there uh, and they are private and the agents do get commissions. And so about six to eight months before you turn 65, every day you're going to get mail. Look at us, look at us, look at us, look at our policy, call us and talk to us. They are sold by private companies and they supplement original Medicare A and B, okay? And there's some federal law that protects you with these because they can only sell a standardized Medigap policy. Now, these Medigap policies do not work with Medicare Advantage. You pay a monthly premium. Uh, when I was 65, mine started at about 160 a month. I think it's up to about 230 now. Uh, costs do vary by plan, company, and location, and costs increase with age, but they are standardized. And what we mean by that is the federal government came in several years ago and said, all right, if you're gonna sell these policies, let's standardize everything. Well, I used to tell everybody to buy plan F and plan F was the most comprehensive. Well, it's not available to people turning 65 today. It's only available to people that turned 65 a couple of years ago or earlier. Uh, but Plan G is now the most comprehensive. And that's the one that I would recommend if you're going with original Medicare. And the only real difference in G and F is this Medicare Part B deductible is not covered. And that's $204 a year. Well, guess what, folks? The premium for G is more than $204, less than Part F. So you're in just as good, if not better shape with G as you would be with F. But all of these companies, when you're talking to them, all the benefits are identical. What's not identical is the cost. Uh, 
And what we don't know is how that cost will change in the future uh, because the companies cannot cancel the insurance, but they can raise the rates. But they can't raise it on just you. They have to raise it on everybody that's uh, in your block, your age block, when they do that. So uh, Medicare A, B, and D, Medicare supplement plan. And, and this is the route that, that I took. Uh, and again, in the nine years I've been on Medicare, I've only had one bill and that was for $50. Everything else is uh, the deductibles, the co-pays, the supplement has, has paid everything. Now I have had, I do have to pay for drugs because that's not anywhere close to 100%. And I have a real cheap drug policy, so I expect to pay, okay. Medicare Advantage plans, the Part C, these are health plan options approved by Medicare. They're run by private companies and Medicare pays an amount for each member's care. Again, about $800 a month goes to the insurance company. And then you may have to pay more. Uh, they use a network of doctors and hospitals. Uh, it may include prescription drug coverage. It may include vision or dental. Uh, it may have some benefit or cost sharing that's a little bit different from the original. The biggest difference here is because these are HMOs and PPOs. There is a limit on which doctors you can go see. So I've always thought if I got cancer, I would go to MD Anderson. If I need a new heart or a valve, I want to go to the Cleveland Clinic. If I've got some type of brain disorder that, that needs surgery, I want to go to John Hopkins. Uh, and these Medicare Advantage plans may not give you that privilege. So that's the negative to them. The benefit to them is the cost may be significantly lower. So if, if, if monthly outlay is a concern, a Medicare Advantage plan may be for you. And there are a few five-star rated plans, only a couple of them. And I don't even know which companies are, I just know there are a couple. But I would look at multiple different companies, Blue Cross, Cigna, Humana, uh, United Healthcare, Aetna, uh, all these companies that, that sell this. And look at the, the doctors they've got on there and not just your doctors, but also other specialties. Uh, because if you need something and it's not, they don't approve it, uh, you can go through your assets very quickly. Uh, so it, 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 you know, there's a, there's a, a cause reaction here. And the cause is I pay less. The reaction is, do I get all the coverage that I want? And so you sort of have to weigh those out and, and see how they are. Uh, so shop carefully for private insurance. Medigap policies are standardized, but premiums vary. So, so look at those. Drug plan benefits vary considerably. So again, if you've already got it, uh, we're in open enrollment. Uh, and then Medicare Advantage plans vary, and you can change from one plan to another. If you find one that you like better, you're in the open enrollment thing. Um, I was going to say, and I forgot. But it's it's nice that you can make changes. So so here's the deal: uh, these Medigap policies. If you sign up for one of these within six months, and I know you can do it prior to sixty-five, and I think you've got you're in that three months before your birthday and three months after your birthday. I don't care how sick you are these insurance companies have to sell this Medigap policy to you. So again, do it promptly. I like doing it the three months before you turned age 65. So if you've got heart disease, cancer, high blood pressure, uh, you're just falling apart. They have to sell it to you. But if you wait after that initial enrollment period, then it's underwritten and they can uh, turn down the, the, policy, the request for a policy. So do it while it's guaranteed issue. Okay, so let's plan for higher health cost in retirement. Uh, this is a chart that shows 
men less than 65, 65 to 75, 75 to 85, above 85, and the same for women. And look at the cost as we age. So some of this is premiums, some of this is services, but later in life, it's not unusual. Uh, and this is not this is not long term care. This is just things I'm paying for and my insurance premiums. Uh, so if we look at today, what does it cost? Well, Part B premiums one forty eight fifty unless there's an Irma adjustment. Uh, Medicap premiums uh, two hundred is probably not a bad number. Uh, Part D forty bucks. That's an average number. Uh, but you add all that up and you're looking at $388.50 per person at age 65. And then you take a look at, in addition to your insurance premiums, you look at uh, your out-of-pocket costs and prescription drugs, dentistry, vision, miscellaneous alternative care products. About $6,200 a year is not unreasonable. Uh, and, and going forward, guess what? Uh, we're gonna see higher premiums. Uh, I think the Medicare B goes to like 160 next year. Uh, so you're gonna have higher premiums, you're gonna have higher, higher out-of-pocket cost. Uh, changes in health means you use it more and you have to do more. Uh, right now there's some services that aren't covered uh, and Again, that's up for debate. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens with uh, this uh, infrastructure bill. I think that the uh, coverage for some of these things is in there. Uh, I don't know how important that is to Congress, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, but if they put it in there, guess what? They're gonna, we're gonna get to pay for it. It's not gonna be free. Uh, so you used to uh, hear all this uh, Medicare for all, uh, people took that as free health care for all. Well, no, it's not. Everybody gets to pay. It's not free. So Fidelity did a study, and for a couple age 65 through the end of life, the cost for all their care, excluding long-term care, is $295,000. The Employee Benefit Research Institute sets $130,000 for men over from 65 through the end of their life, and $146,000 for women and 270 for couples. So these numbers aren't exact, but they give you an idea that uh, uh, you know the biggest expenses you're gonna have in retirement are taxes, healthcare costs, and maybe long-term care. And when we talk about long-term care, uh, it's, it's not really covered by Medicare or Medigap policies. Uh, there's a little bit of, well, there's coverage for the first 20 days and a little bit for the next 80. And then nothing over that. It pays an average the cost of 28 days. After that, you're on your own. And this is where you have those, you need help with those activities of daily living. Uh, it really doesn't cover that at all. I mean, if you just, if you can't feed yourself or you can't transfer, you can't go to the bathroom, you can't take your medicine, uh, you don't need skilled living, you just need somebody to help you live. Uh, <sighs> It doesn't cover that. So let's take a look at three reminders. Enroll on time. Shop carefully for private insurance to go with Medicare. And plan for higher health costs. So, uh, okay. So that's about 40 minutes. I was thinking it'd take about 45. So I must have blown through something a little faster. Uh, Betsy, do we have any questions? We do, we have a few questions from our audience. The first one is, if I retire, does my income for Medicare depend on my pre-retirement income or my current retirement income? That's a great question. Um, and we've, we've had several people from local companies retire. And uh, when we look at this income related chart, this IRMA chart, and when they do that, they go back two years of tax returns. So for 2021, they're using the 2019 tax return. Why? Wow. Well, 2020 wasn't due till just a couple of months ago, so they couldn't do it. So they always go back to two years. 
But when you retire, if your income is going to be lower, there's a form called SS44. Um, I don't know if I can get to it or not, but I might. Uh, no, I can't. Uh, but it's, it's a change in life, change in lifestyle. And you would go in and you say, hey, work stoppage, I've retired. And my income this year is going to be substantially less. So you'll pay that $148 rather than $288 or $488. Uh, so that's a, that's a good one. And again, so SS44 is the name of the firm, the form. Okay, and we can go ahead and send that out to everybody through email later. Okay. Um, one other question is, I have affordable care with zero premium. I love the program. I currently get social security. How can I delay until two or three months after turning 65? Uh, you can't. Uh, affordable care pay second to Medicare. And uh, once you turn 65 and you do not have Medicare, then your affordable care will not pay you. So affordable care, the price of it is based on income. And if you're in a certain income level, it is very, very affordable. Uh, if you're in a higher income level, it's very, very look at a, if if price is the is the driving force here, you may want to take a look at a Medicare Advantage plan. And there are Medicare Advantage plans that are inexpensive. Uh, they're not quite as comprehensive, but uh, having decent insurance is better than no insurance. Uh, so if I, if I can come back. Here we go. So over here, before age 65, these are your options. But unless you are working for a company that has 20 or more people covered, you Medicare pays first. And even if you have these other insurances, they're worthless. They won't pay a penny until you have Medicare. Okay, sorry. Um, there is a quick follow up to that. And the question is from the point of affordable care perspective, how do I transition? Uh, if you're already receiving social security, it's automatic at age 65. If you're not already receiving social security, then you have to go into uh, the ssa.gov and sign up for A and B uh, and D and uh, look around and get a, uh, a supplemental Medicare policy. Now, you don't have to keep these policies and you don't have to stay in A and B. Uh, and if you've got a, uh, an insurance agent that you trust or, uh, you know somebody else that's on a, a Part C Advantage plan, you might be able to start there. We don't sell these policies, uh, but most people start with A and B and D, and then they switch over. And you can switch from that to a Medicare Advantage plan, but that just gives you an opportunity to get on Medicare uh, and, you, uh, and, and, and then switch over. Now, if you are, on a Medicare Advantage plan and you move and that plan does not service the area you move to, then you can switch back 
uh, A and B and D and get a uh, Medigap policy. Okay. Um, you mentioned that if you're covered by a large employer, you don't have to sign up at 65. So let's say you retire at 68. If you take COBRA then, did you say it won't pay much because you should be on Medicare at that point? All right, well, let's just look at the same slide I've got up here. This, this is very similar to the last question. COBRA uh, is, is a law that says if, if you're terminated or if you terminate, uh, you can keep your insurance for 18 months and you have to pay 100% of the cost plus a small uh, processing charge, two or 3%. But COBRA also pays second to Medicare. So if, if in this case, you work till 68, you're under a big plan, you don't have to sign up for Medicare. You can stay under your plan. Uh, but you do have to uh, let them know you don't want the coverage or else they may give it to you. But once you retire at 68, you instantly should go into Medicare. Uh, or once you are, COBRA is really not any good after 65. I, I, best, I, I should have just said that uh, because once you're 65, Medicare is, is your primary payer and it's going to pay. And then COBRA, COBRA is just not any good. Most people on COBRA are thrilled to go on Medicare. That was a situation that I personally was on, and I loved it. It cut my price well in half and dramatically increased my benefits. So even though you're, you're still working for a big company, you need to at least check out uh, what it costs, and you might be better off under Medicare than staying under the group insurance. It just, okay. just got to weigh the advantages and the cost. The follow-up to that was, would the special enrollment start when COBRA ends or when you leave your employer and start COBRA? So I, would that depend on the age or? That depends on the age. If okay. you are 65 and older, instantly go to uh, Medicare. I mean, you can go on COBRA and pay the premiums, but guess what? It won't pay anything because you're over 65 and they're going to ask you, how much did Medicare pay? We'll supplement that. Well, Medicare didn't pay anything. Well, neither are we. It's a big problem. People don't realize that sometimes. Okay. Um, one last question. So how long does the IRMA last if income goes up one time due to inheritance or an insurance payoff or a property sale or something like that? An inheritance does not impact your income. Uh, property sale does. If you sell something and you make a big profit, your income goes up. Your regular income, your social security, your dividends, your interest, and the gain. Uh, what was there a third option in there? Inheritance, property sale? Insurance payoff? Uh, I don't think it, insurance is not taxed. I mean, I'm assuming life insurance. Uh, and that's received tax-free. That doesn't go into your tax return. If you have your house burned down and they rebuild it, that, that they normally don't cover everything. So that doesn't go into your tax return. So if you have a, a, a capital gain, you sell something and make a huge profit on it. Two years later, you will see your Medicare costs go up, but they'll only go up for one year if your income comes back down the next year. So they're always looking at the two previous years tax return. And that's what, that's what it's based on. Wonderful. Those were all of our questions. If you do have anything that wasn't covered and you wanted to ask Chuck, you can email us. Um, you can email Chuck at um, what's your new email address at Elevate, Chuck? Is it why, don't we Chuck? Just use, why don't we just use the marketing and you can get it to me? There you go. So 
uh, marketing at elevate-wealth.com. And then again, if you'd like to view our next webinar, that will be in October. And that information is on our website at elevate-wealth.com. I'm going to go ahead and send a recording of this webinar out to everybody. And you guys can just log in and watch that on YouTube whenever it's convenient for you. And please do send that to your family and friends that are at this age that they might be concerned about their health care and retirement. And again, we thank you all for joining us today. Thank you so much, Chuck. Thank y'all. Appreciate you. Have a great day, everybody.